Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. A very wet week ahead, especially for the mountains. Very cold as well, and even a little bit of ice for parts of the northern mountains. Let's get right to the details because the story today is it's not 80 degrees, right? We've got that northeast wind pushing in the wedge of cold air, kind of setting up temperatures only in the 30s and 40s. Columbia, you're not 122. You have an air down there, but uh, kind of funny to see that showing up. But you see how cold the air is to our north. We've got below zero readings coming into the northern plains as well. Um, really cold. I'm going to turn the satellite image around just because you can see mostly drizzle or mist. There's not a bunch of precipitation out there yet, but what's going to happen is we're going to see some areas of low pressure. In fact, two of these form here and move across the country like this while cold air is trying to wedge itself down the eastern facing slopes. And that has prompted um, some winter weather advisories for parts of the area, but also a winter storm warning for parts of um, Ash County. I'm going to turn on the advisories here. It might take a second to populate, but we'll show you some of the winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings. The, the, the place in particular we're talking about is going to be right in here. So areas, you know, just north of Interstate 40, that's an area we're going to watch. And I really think, you know, Boone up towards uh, Jefferson, uh, Wilkes County, you can see there's the advisories popping in. So this is a winter weather advisory for some icing in purple. Um, the pink shades are winter storm warnings. You can see that extends up into parts of West Virginia and Virginia, where they're going to see probably a pretty significant icing event up in those areas. Let me show you, too, also that we're talking about the potential for some very heavy rain. We're going to put the, um, the excessive rainfall outlook on here in a second. I'll show you the day two here in a second. Um, so this is the chance of flash flooding starting really tomorrow night into Wednesday. You see the medium risk, again, that's around a 10%, 5% there. We go to day three and notice how it moves in. So this is the probability of seeing flash flooding for Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday. So the middle of the week is a time period we're going to watch for flooding. So let's get right to the forecast. All right, let's dive right into the forecast here. So today, not much going on, maybe some drizzle or mist as we go through time. Um, you'll see that potentially we've got some moisture. I'm going to turn off the current radar because that's going to be annoying not to see that on there, but we'll turn that radar off here. So as we get into the afternoon hours, we'll kind of go forward here. You can see the wedge of high pressure. I put the isobars on here because this will show you that the high pressure over the northeast centered about right there. You see that flow of air pushing in the cold air. So what's going to happen as we go into tonight and really tomorrow, we're likely going to see some of this moisture kind of get banked up against the mountains. And again, snow to the north, this icy mix is going to be what we're going to see in the mountains. But right there, you see that kind of area? This is the area we're watching. So not widespread icing, but enough for some of those eastern facing slopes we could have issues. To me, the rain is the big story. This is wave one of the rain coming in tomorrow. Um, real heavy rain moving into the mountains and foothills. Um, that pushes through late tomorrow into Wednesday. And then another surge of moisture comes in. Wednesday into Thursday. So there's two distinct waves of rain, one tomorrow into Wednesday, which kind of lays the groundwork, unfortunately, I think, for the heavier rain that's coming in, because usually this is the way it works. You saturate everything with the first wave and the next wave comes in. So if we're going to see real issues with flooding, I think it's going to be Wednesday night into Thursday. And you can see some of that rain, particularly because some of it could be thunderstorms that could produce some, some downpours. That moves through. And then in the weekend, we're likely going to see another wave of rain come in on Sunday. Um, so we got to keep an eye on that potential is this next storm. So this is going into Sunday. So you've got three systems this week, one tomorrow, one Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, and a third one uh, coming up this weekend. So let's talk about the winter weather prospects because there is ice. This is the blend of models just to show you the ice potential here. And again, I'm going to stop this. Uh, we'll go into Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So again, a couple things to note here. There's not going to be any ice here. This is just some bogus stuff. But you notice the area right in here. This is the this is the spot. That's the spot from Boone up to Ash uh, County, up towards Jefferson, up to a quarter inch. It's going to be borderline power line issues. Um, as you get towards Wilkes County, Allegheny County, Surrey County, um, nuisance amount, maybe just on some elevated bridges. Uh, maybe some railings, treetops. The roads probably for the most part should be fine because the ground is so warm from the recent warm up that we're just expecting this to be on trees and stuff. So not expecting a huge deal um, with the ice. But if you are traveling north, especially southwest Virginia, this is where there's going to be problems. So up in this area, yeah, this is a combination of a little bit of snow, some sleet, and then a whole bunch of ice on top of it could be really problematic up there. 
The rain obviously is a bigger story. Look at the rainfall totals. This is a seven day rainfall forecast. So this goes all the way through next Monday. Look at some of these totals in the southwestern part of the state. You're talking, you know, seven, eight, ten inches of rain. In fact, the highest total on this map in the mountain somewhere is 11 inches of rain. Now, that's an area southwest that wasn't as heavily impacted by Helene. Um, so, you know, not as, uh, I mean, still a concern, but not as many low water areas as we do um, to the northern mountains. I'm going to stop this right about here, and I'm going to show you the areas I'm concerned about. So this is Asheville where there's five inches. These are areas that were really impacted by Helene right there. Um, so those areas in particular, I'm talking McDowell County, um, Rutherford County, Polk County, Mitchell, um, Yancey, and then up towards Avery and Upper Burke County. So these are areas we're going to watch. And again, hopefully this will be spread out over several days. But as I mentioned, the first wave could raise the water levels. And then as we get that next surge of moisture, cause some real issues. And you heard me talk about this last week. When we get heavy rain in the wintertime, because there's no vegetation, there's no leaves on the trees, runoff of rainfall is much, much more exaggerated than in any other time of the year. Um, so we tend to see runoff be a real problem this time of year, because especially when the ground gets saturated, grasses, bushes, trees, all that stuff aren't using the moisture from the soil, so it just sits there. And so then when it does rain, it runs off fairly quickly. So I would not be shocked to see flood watches issued at some point this week, but just be prepared. If you're in the mountains, you're gonna get cold, rain and ice here the next couple of days with flooding increasingly becoming a problem as we get towards the middle of the week. Of course, I will post updates throughout the week. Flooding is our biggest concern, but we want you to stay weather aware in the mountains and foothills for the flooding and the little bit of ice we're expecting coming up tonight into tomorrow.